What's going on YouTube? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the second part of cryptography basics. So in the first part or in the last video we talked about symmetric encryption and we talked about asymmetric encryption. And if you remember or if you recall from the last video that symmetric encryption is the type of encryption where a secret key is used for both the encryption and decryption so it's used in both ways encryption and it's also used for decryption between both parties now the case on the other hand the case for asymmetric encryption was different in asymmetric encryption we rely on two set of keys we rely on public key a public key and a private key So, in total, there are there is actually there is two public keys and two private keys. So why we have four, two public keys for both the sender and the recipient, and simultaneously or likewise, the private key we have two versions or two. <coughs> keys for the sender and for the recipient so what happens here is that if we want to encrypt a message we're going to use the public key of the recipient okay and to decrypt the message the recipient will have to use their private key <clears throat> so the sender will be able to use the recipient public key to encrypt but of course only the recipient is able to decrypt the message because only the recipient has a possession of the private key the sender even the sender has no knowledge of the recipient private key because if they know they would be able to decrypt all of the messages whether they, are, they come from the sender or from someone else so that is the asymmetric encryption now also we mentioned that symmetric encryption is faster so it is faster than than the um, asymmetric encryption. The asymmetric is slower. On the other hand, symmetric encryption is considered not scalable. So it's not scalable due to the fact that if we lose the if we lose one key, or if we have a set of hundred keys, right? We're gonna need if we lose one, we're gonna need to regenerate the whole set of hundred keys. Or if we have, for example, more than one set of more than one set of sender and recipient, let's say we have hundred senders and recipients, we're gonna need like two thousand, three thousand keys. And if you lose one of them, we're gonna need to regenerate the whole system. So it's not scalable. On the other hand, asymmetric encryption is scalable. One last thing we mentioned was symmetry encryption we need a secure channel to transfer the secret key okay so if the secret key is known by a third party other than the sender or the recipient the third party will be able to run decryption algorithms or will be able to use brute force to get the secret key and if the secret key is guessed or known um, the whole communication is compromised so we need a secure channel to transfer the secret key on asymmetric encryption we don't need the secure channel right the message or the ciphertext can travel in an unsecure medium like http okay for example i'm saying http is an unsecure channel it's not encrypted if we send a ciphertext using the http protocol it's not a problem even if the attacker has got possession of the ciphertext, they will need the private key of the recipient, right? To be able to decrypt it. And the private key of the recipient is only known to the recipient. That's why it's considered more secure to use asymmetric encryption. Okay, that's quick brief of the last video. Now, today we're going to talk about hashing and we're going to talk about public key infrastructure and SSL TLS. So hashing. As all of you know guys, hashing is a way to, hashing as a, a cryptographic function 
that takes an input for example the input can be a file or it can be a message so hashing takes the input and transfers or gives you a fixed sized value we call it a checksum checksum here also a checksum so no matter the file size or no matter the length of the message there will be there will always be a fixed size checksum depending on the hash function so that's important to know guys that the that the output of the hash is fixed in size not in value of course so if a file has let's say we have file with six gigabyte size and a file with six megabytes so if we hash the two files we're going to have <coughs> the same size checksum the same size not the same value remember this if we are able to produce the same value or produce the same hash of different files we got a hash collision <coughs> okay so the one thing to know about hashing is that we produce a fixed size checksum based on the hashing algorithms so the size of the hash or the checksum depends on the hashing algorithm okay now another thing to know guys is let's say we have file 1 and file 2 now say that file 1 and file 2 both have the same contents so th let's say both have the word hello inside of them okay now if we come and produce the uh, hash for do these two files they are identical files right so they will produce the same checksum and it's not a problem as long as the content is the same now if we change the contents only by one letter even by one letter say file one we changed instead of h we put b so file one contains below and file two contains hello this will produce totally different checksums okay that's very easy to remember and also important to have in mind if we get the same checksum for two different files we call it hash collisions or hash collision and it's very frequent in some hashing algorithms some hashing algorithms of course not all of them now some of the hashing algorithms we're going to talk about today is first we have the MD5 we have SHA 256 and we have the HMAC these are the most popular ones <coughs> now the thing is in MD5 hash collision is very possible that's why MD5 is not secure anymore not secure to use to hash password or sensitive data now the case with SHA-256 or secure hashing algorithm it's actually secure the same with HMAC now HMAC stands for hash based message authentication okay now the difference between the difference between HMAC and SHA-256 or MD5 is that HMAC what do we do here we use a key to hash the uh, file or to hash the message so in addition to the input so we have the input and we have a key to produce an HMAC hash okay now in this tutorial or in this video we're going to talk about some of the hashing tools we can use in Linux to hash files or uh, messages okay before we do that let's now jump to the public key infrastructure or the and the use of SSL TLS certificates now the thing is with public key infrastructure and SSL TLS they are widely used in to actually to produce certificates to actually uh, using the HTTP protocol so basically if we open a new page here 
all of you know guys that we have two we have HTTP and we have HTTPS these protocols are very essential to for the communication over the web so the thing is with hey HTTPS is that here we have a certificate now certificate is generated using CSR certificate sign and request so we produce a certificate sign and request and we send that to a certificate authority the certificate authority will take a look at our request and if all and if all goes well it will sign it so you have a signed certificate now after the signed certificate is produced we will have the hey https lock for our domain or for your domain example.com okay an example okay so if you have a domain such as example.com you want to produce um, a certificate you will have to generate self or uh, sorry certificate sign request you send that to a certificate authority the certificate authority take takes a look at your request and if all goes well it will sign your certificate and after the certificate is signed the browser will be able to trust your certificate and hence when someone navigates to your example.com domain they will be presented they will, they will see the hey https protocol specifically they will see the icon lock with the uh, letter s which means that the communication through your domain is secure and that the browser trusts your domain that's in a nutshell the public key infrastructure and SSL TLS now how, do, how can we produce SSL TLS we can use open SSL to generate um, certificate sign request now if you don't want to publicly use the certificate what you can do yes you will need certificate sign request but instead of sending that to certificate authority you're going to self-sign the certificate self-signed self-signed certificate now self-signed certificates are not trusted by the browser Firefox Chrome if you share your domain name with a self-signed certificate with someone outside your network and that person tries to navigate your domain the, the browser whether Firefox or Chrome will give them a security warning that the communication is not secure and they will have the option to accept or cancel the request if they accept they will be able to browse to your site but the catch is that you'll be able to intercept all of the communications so if you are on a corporate network okay and you have a firewall okay now if you want the firewall to have full visibility over the HTTPS communications you will have to import or you have to create a self-signed request uh, uh, sorry certificate signing request and then self-sign it after you self-sign the certificate you will have to import the self-signed certificate to all the browsers all the devices on your network after you import it the browsers of the end users will not complain about the certificate and then the file will be able to decrypt all the communications since you have a self-signed certificate right so that's how all, all of this works now let's jump to a machine and demonstrate how can we use all of the hashing tools in addition to how we can generate certificate sign requests with open SSL and also we can take a look at how we can also self sign it if you don't want to send this to um, a certificate or certificate authority okay so the examples we're going to take in this video are taken from this room and we're going to take a look at the task 5 we have a couple questions to answer and while answering the questions we're going to use some of the tools or some of the hashing tools the first question is what is the SHA or secure hashing algorithm 256 check some of the file order JSON so 
cd task05. So you have this file order.json. So let's take a look at the contents first. This is the contents of this file. So it's kind of uh, payroll information for the user Alice. Alice recipient USD amount. Yo, it's actually kind of uh, payment sent from Alice to Mallory. Anyway, let's now hash this file. How can we hash this using a secure hashing algorithm? SHA-256 sum. And we put in the name of the file. Simple as that. And here we have the hash produced now the, the next question tackles the fact that if we only change one piece of information here if we instead of 1000 we write 9000 what's going to happen of course the hash will change so if we do that nano order json and here we change this to 9000 so only a slight modification on the file will change the complete hash as you can see the hash is now totally different using SHA-256 and the key what is the HMAC of order.txt now here we use the uh, hash based message authentication to create a hash of the file order.txt now as I said earlier if you, if you want to hash using HMAC we're going to need a key so the key is given here and here we are using SA256 in conjunction with the function. So we're going to say HMAC256, the key, and the file. As you can see, we produce the HMAC hash. All right. Now, also, we have MD5SUM. We can use MD5 as well to hash a file but again md5s are not secure for the reason that they can create hash collisions or for the fact that you can use um, rainbow tables I didn't explain rainbow table a rainbow table is actually a table that consists of two columns in the first column we have passwords and in the next columns or the next column we have hashes for every password we have the corresponding hash so say we have we want to find the password of a certain user but the password is stored as md5 hash what we can do we can take the hash and we can run the hash through this table once we find a match stored in the table for this hash automatically we're going to be able to conclude the corresponding password because it's already stored in the table so rainbow tables are a common attack against uh, password hashes so that's why now let's talk about the tools that we can use to create SSL certificates so here as you can see this is the task and all the way down we have two tasks we have two questions let's first navigate to the task name the task directory cd task 06 all right we have two keys as you can see key.pm and certificate so that's the key and that's the certificate now the question is what is the size of the public key in bits now before talking about the public uh, the size of the public key let's first get to know the commands that are used to generate self uh, self uh, oh my god so confusing self not self certificate sign request sometimes the uh, shortcuts are kind of confusing anyway let's go to the uh, note file and here I'm going to scroll down, type open SSL. Okay, so with this command, we're going to, we can generate um, certificates on a request. We're not going to enter the command, but we're going only to explain it. So we use open SSL. To create a new certificate signing request using a new RSA key with a length of 2048 bits. Okay, dash notes it means that we are creating this the certificate signing request and the key without a passphrase. Dash key out 
is to specify the key name and the location and dash out here to specify the name and the location of the certificate sign and request. Okay. Now, creating the public key certificates. Okay, so let's take this one and explain it. So, in this command, we use the option X509 to indicate that we are generating a self-signed certificate. Now, we have to use dash request dash in and put in the name of the certificate signing request we generated in the previous command. Dash CA website, that's the name of the certificate. Dash CA key, that's the option dash CA key here to specify the name of the private key, right, that will be used to sign the certificate. And here we specify the output and we use the SSH256 as a hashing algorithm. And also we can say days specify the expiration date or the after how many days the certificate will expire. Once we do that, we'll be able to generate the certificate, right? Self-signed certificate. Okay, let's go back. So here we created the public certificate and here we generated a self-signed certificate request. Okay, so here we have one certificate and we have the key. We're asked or we're tasked to find the size of the public key in bits. Open SSL dash X or X. 509-in cert so to answer the question we need to extract the details of the certificate we can do that using open SSL x509 dash in and then we put in the certificate name and dash text this will display it's not uppercase X, it is lowercase. Okay, this will display the certificate that has been generated using the previous commands I showed you. So here, as you can see, if you scroll up, we have the information about the RSA public key that has been used to sign the certificate. As you can see, the RSA public key has 4096 bits in size. Till which year is the certificate valid? We can take a look at other details to be able to find so till which year as you can see it expires on February 25 2039 that will be the answer for this question now you have learned how to generate certificate sign and request and also you have learned how to self sign it using open SSL so that will be for today guys I hope you liked the video and we will continue with the cryptography later.